Hey, I'm Justin Smith and this is another episode of Turo YouTube. A lot of people ask if I have an LAX delivery, how does that process work? What does that look like? So today I'll be documenting that, whether it's getting the car washed, which is uh, where I'm heading to now as a first step, all the way to where I leave the car for the renter. So stay tuned. Okay, so with the car wash, you want to consider, do you want to be washing the car by yourself all the time? Do you want to be running it through a detail shop? Do you want to run it through kind of like a self-service wash center? I personally do an unlimited pass at a self-service style wash center. I feel like the premium style wash keeps the Mustang as nice as uh, I want it to be for renters, nice and sparkly and clean. Um, and it's a, a good rate. I mean, I pay 30 bucks a month for an unlimited wash and I, I come here probably twice a week. So I feel like it, it more than pays for itself, but each uh, Turo host will have to make their decision on their own. All right, so now we got the car all washed up, looking good, looking pretty. So now the next thing that I do before I drop the car off is obviously take pre-trip photos. I take, between, I think like 50-ish of these. So you wanna do like kind of condition of the car photos. Like instead of just doing that, I do of course this, and then closer on the condition of the tire and the wheel just in case the car gets any like curb rash or if there's any other uh, physical damage to be seen. So taking the pre-trip photos now. All right, so some things that probably would be easy to miss on pre-trip photos, at least for uh, for me, it's always a, a good reminder just kind of have a checklist, but um, the condition of the inside of the doors, um, I like to open the doors and make sure I get a photo of the condition of the inside of the doors. The next thing I want to do, because uh, this is a convertible, I want to take condition photos of the convertible fabric roof itself, both open and closed. So it's just all part of the like 50 photo check-in process that I do um, for trips with Turo. Um, I do photos of the condition of the inside of the car, like let's say like the floor mats, the seats, make sure I have photographic evidence of like, yes, it was clean, I vacuumed it, all that stuff. I would, as a renter on Turo, expect a car to be hopefully clean when I uh, rent it. So I, as a Turo host, definitely try to go above and beyond, make sure everything is cleaned up as good as possible. Um, another thing to keep in mind that I feel like probably Turo hosts forget the first couple times they host a trip is you wanna take photos of your dashboard indicators, your RPM, your speedometer, while the car is turned on and while the RPM is running above zero because you want to have evidence of literally the engine working, <laughs> just in case, right? <coughs> Another thing that photo will do, excuse the cough, is it'll show that your check engine light is not on. So let's say, you know, as a renter, I'm really excited about my trip, I got my family in town, and I turn on the car and all of a sudden the check engine light is on. Not the best experience. So you definitely want to make sure you take some time to take photos of the mileage that your car is at as proof and then uh, evidence that the check engine light is not on. Right. Also, pro tip, you want to make sure you get little ramps to drive your car onto so you can check the underside easier for your pre-trip photos. Pro tip for check-in. All right, so now we got the car all gassed up, driving down to the airport now. I always try to choose a parking garage that obviously has a free shuttle from LAX to the parking garage to make sure that the renter has an easy way to pick up the Mustang. Um, just about halfway there, once I get to the parking garage, I'll do a little update of the final sweep. And then on the way back home, because I live really close to a very economical shuttle from LAX to where I live called the flyaway bus, it's only $10 where a Lyft or an Uber ride might be 50 or 60. Um, so definitely not ashamed. Um, I'll do an economical bus if it's uh, what, a fifth of the price, <laughs> I'm down. All right, all right. So we are pulling up to Wally Park Premier. I've got the QR code ready and prepaid. I'm not gonna have uh, the renter pay for me to park the car in a parking garage. I do include, so the renter has that available when they need to leave the garage. I'll take a picture of the exact spot that I end up in so the renter knows exactly where to get the car. 
All right, so now we got the car parked in its parking spot garage and we've got the lockbox on for the key. So my renter can come grab it when their flight leaves because I will be at my day job and I won't be able to meet them in person. I'd love to meet them in person. In-person check-in is totally cool, no problem. It's just uh, got a day job too, so just making it happen for folks. All right, so now I'm at LAX on the arrivals level downstairs, one of the busiest airports in the world, uh, waiting for the flyaway bus. You see that blue sign. The station uh, is pretty close to my house. It stops here at all seven terminals, picking people up, and then goes straight to Van Nuys Terminal, close to where I live, uh, which saves me like 40 to 50 bucks <laughs> from doing a Lyft or an Uber. So pretty cool savings. All right, so it's now 9.30. I think I started this journey around seven-ish. It doesn't usually take this long. Um, the flyaway bus was, I think, 30-ish minutes late to pick us up at LAX for whatever reason. Um, happens, it's all good, part of life. Um, once the bus picked us up, we had to stop and let people off, still on airport property, because they took their mask off. Um, it's still a pandemic going on, so it's important for people to follow uh, whatever you know rules are in place, local guidelines, all that stuff. Here in LA, the whole mask thing seems to be done like June 15th, I think is the rule. Um, but you know, there's still like individual places that have their own rules. A little tired, uh, a little bit of a long day because we had to stop also on the way back from the airport. Uh, on the 405, we had to stop on the freeway because someone was eating and um, our driver asked them to, to stop and I don't think they did. So she, I think, stopped the bus for a minute to, it seemed like, make a point. Um, but now I'm back at the flyway terminal waiting for lift ride. So hopefully uh, they'll show up here soon. All right, so last night I got home at 9.45 p.m. It's not normally that long of a experience to get the Turo car dropped off at the airport for the renter. If it's going to take that long in the future with the flyaway bus, definitely I'm going to look into a Lyft or Uber on the way home. I know it'll be a little bit more money, but the convenience factor there will be tough to beat if it's an hour faster. Uh, so just something to consider too. That is the procedure that I follow to get the car dropped off at LAX for a renter. If you found some value in this video, I hope you click the like button. To find more videos like this, please subscribe. I'll be posting often about my Turo experience. And I hope you guys leave a comment with something that you found value on or would like to see in the next video. And see you guys soon. Be well.